is a hybrid V6 Ferrari. An abomination, some might say. Well, they're wrong, and they definitely haven't heard the noises this thing makes. And besides, nobody complains about a six-cylinder Porsche. This is the quickest 911 of them all, the Turbo S. But should you be married to the idea of a V8, McLaren has a 750S to sell you. What do these cars have in common? Well, they're all street legal, but given how fast they are, they probably shouldn't be, which got us thinking. What happens if we race them against something that is also street legal, but only once a year at Le Mans? This episode of Ultimate Drag Race Replay has been brought to you by the Valentine One Radar Locator. In this case, literally, because I'd probably be behind bars had I not been using one for the last 20 years. <laughs> Find the radar before it finds you. It's cheaper than a lawyer. Ask me how I know. This is the Cadillac V Series R, and it finished in third and fourth places at last year's 24 Hours of Le Mans. We'll have three hypercar brands on the podium, Ferrari, Toyota, and Cadillac Racing. <laughs> Serious stuff. It weighs only 2,300 pounds, and that includes a 230 horsepower electric motor and a five and a half liter, naturally aspirated 8,800 RPM V8 that's allowed to make between 645 and 700 horsepower at the wheels, depending on balance of performance rules which is kind of nuts because road cars don't have balance of performance rules. They're allowed to make as much horsepower as any idiot could ask for. And so they do. Ferrari 296 is also a hybrid. Its 3-liter, 120-degree V6 is twin-turbocharged to 654 horsepower, which is then augmented by an electric motor. Total power going to just the rear wheels, 818, which is a ton. So even though this weighs one and a half times what the Cadillac weighs, its power to weight is such that each of those horses only have to carry an additional pound. And I'm not so sure a horse can feel a pound. McLaren has chosen to go about it with no hybrid system, and so the 750S is nearly 400 pounds lighter than the Ferrari. <laughs> It may make <clears throat> only 740 horsepower from its 4-liter twin-turbo flat-plane crank V8, but its power to weight is nearly identical to the Ferrari's. And like the Ferrari, it sends all of that thrust to the rear wheels alone. As always, the Porsche 911 Turbo S is the odd man out, with its twin turbocharged 3.7 liter flat six hanging out the back and attached to all wheel drive. It weighs 100 pounds more than the Ferrari and 500 pounds more than the all carbon McLaren. But the 911's PDK whole shot is the stuff of legends. So this is genuinely anyone's game. Let's see which of these hyper supercars wins the right to race an actual current Le Mans car. a really, really fast car and a terrifyingly fast car. I can't tell you exactly where that line is, but I do know that it's somewhere between those really, really fast cars and this absolutely 
terrifying Ferrari 296. <laughs> sure, we've had faster cars here on this show. And it's not just the speed, it's also not just the fact that it's fighting for traction at 100 miles an hour, it's the way the 296 accelerates. It pulls harder and harder as it approaches redline, so you reach for the paddle, grab the next gear thinking it's going to relent, but it doesn't. It somehow seems to pull even harder. Launch one of these things and trust me, by the time you get to the quarter mile, you will want it to all be over. It's terrifying. We've seen before that Michelin Pilot Cup 2Rs have a hard time dealing with the surface at Willow Springs, but the 296's launch control learned to ignore the horrendous wheel hop and banged off consistent 0-60s to in just 2.6 seconds, tying the Corvette Z06 for the rear wheel drive record. But from there on out, the Z06 would have no chance, and neither do the other cars here. Its 144 mile an hour trap speed is hypercar territory, one of the highest we've ever seen on this show. Entry level Ferrari, this is not. Winning Ferrari, it is, against McLaren and Porsche's quickest sports cars, which it's time to talk about. This is a dead tie. And I don't mean like, oh, they're within the same 10th. No, no, these two cars are one hundredth of a second apart. And little inside baseball, we did this test a dozen or so times, and they were never more than a couple hundredths apart. That is consistency, and this is an actual tie. At the finish line, how they got here, though, was very different. The 750S is the last McLaren to not use hybrid assistance, yet it still hauls the mail. Turbo lag is a non-issue on launch control starts, and the computer manages traction beautifully, though it's not quite enough to beat the Ferrari. It's in last place on the run to 60 miles an hour, ticking off a run in 2.8 seconds, fighting for traction the whole way. The whole way to 100 miles an hour, that is, but that hardly slowed it down, and it finishes just four clicks behind the Ferrari. Like the 296, it's as quick as a last-gen hybrid hypercar, the million-dollar P1. And it's a bargain against the Ferrari 2, costing $183,000 less than the 296. Turbo S shines, hitting 60 miles an hour in a completely drama-free, easily repeatable 2.4 seconds, just one-tenth of a second behind the 1500 horsepower Bugatti Chiron Pure Sport. It's almost half a second quicker to 60 than the McLaren, despite making 100 fewer horsepower and dragging 500 additional pounds with it. That is the beauty of a 911 launch. It takes the McLaren every one of those 1,320 feet to catch up, and it does, passing the 911 right at the line with a six mile an hour speed advantage. This video is brought to you by the Haggerty Drivers Club, which includes a subscription to our award-winning magazine, 24-7 flatbed roadside assistance, and far more. Join or get more info at the link below.
It should be fairly obvious that Le Mans endurance racers don't typically have launch control set up to run quarter mile drag races. In fact, it doesn't fire its engine until it's already moving. It gets moving under electric power because that's the quickest way to get up to 60 kilometers an hour, which is the pit lane speed limit. Only then does it drop the clutch and drag start the gas motor. And it sounds like the end of the world. Its 4-cam naturally aspirated cross-plane 5.5-liter V8 easily makes the full amount of power that BOP rules allow at the rear wheels. So the hybrid system is mostly used for fuel economy during the races. And yes, fuel economy is a real thing, even in a car that sees over 200 miles an hour on the Mulsanne straight. We really need to thank Cadillac and Mobile One for bringing out this magnificent machine, and for also dragging along Seb Bordet, who is so authentically a Le Mans racing car driver that he was born in the town of Le Mans at a clinic on the side of the track. I, on the other hand, was born in a dumpster in Brooklyn, New York. So I genuinely mean this when I say it. You win this race, I'm gonna break your friggin' kneecaps. Well, that thing's really mean, so I'll let it do the talking. They found a nice Frenchman? I'm gonna be nice to you now? Okay, well this is nuts. Can't say I've ever raced a Le Mans car before. I'm gonna have the air conditioning off because it's the right thing to do. He's probably hotter in there. Right, to right time. humans. Unloading it, starting it, and warming it up is a two-hour process that requires an entire team of people and a strategy meeting. And it just got beaten by a Ferrari with Apple CarPlay. This is a triumph. This is outrageous. And this is now Captain Obvious speaking, and uh, that is not the full story. The Ferrari has launch control made for this. The Cadillac doesn't and drag starting the big V8 while under electric power momentarily drops the acceleration down to zero. Which adds a couple tenths to its run to 60. The Cadillac tried to start out dumping the V8's clutch and while well, that run went up in smoke. The Caddy ultimately crosses the line a couple tenths behind the Ferrari, but it's traveling 161 miles an hour fastest trap speed we've ever seen in the quarter. And that is very telling. The power is all there. So while it is a victory for the Ferrari, it's a somewhat hollow one because we asked the Cadillac to do something it just wasn't designed to do. However, accelerating from 60 kilometers an hour to full race speed is something that car is meant to do. So I think we would be remiss not to try to recreate that race while we're here. Okay, we're gonna roll into this at exactly 37 miles an hour, which is 60 kilometers an hour. That's the pit speed limiter. Uh, I'm gonna be in the right, he's gonna be in the left. I'm gonna go down to second gear. Swimming across the cones, flooring it. And ready, and... was quite 
quite the reversal, the Ferrari made it easy. All I had to do was mat the pedal and occasionally pull an upshift paddle, never worrying about traction. Meanwhile, Seb had to manage the monstrous output from that V8, which incinerated the tires for a split second before he was able to rein it in. How much power did the Cadillac actually make? We'll never know. But you can bet the team took advantage of the fact that we have no BOP rules on this show. When it hooked up, it blew by the 818 horsepower 296 like the Ferrari had run out of gas. Okay, obviously we have a quartet of really, 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 really fast cars. But what's perhaps a little bit more interesting than just how fast they are is that the difference between a terrifyingly fast car and a Le Mans car isn't nearly as big as you'd think.